I made another joke about Jackie. I said, you know, Jackie made one of the biggest blunders in show business history. He entered it. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie made the biggest blunder in show business history. He decided to enter it. That's a joke. <laughs> of course, of course, it's funny. No, Jackie's biggest blunder was when he leaked. No, but it just seems like every Italian person I meet is related to another Italian friend of mine. I bring home a girl that I wanted to have sex with. It's your mother's house. Hey, Pat, you know what's so funny? Because, you know, um, Tammy and I are going to go do Artie Lang show. Do you know Artie Lang? That I what? Do you know Artie Lang? Uh, Artie Lang, I love him, but he's not funny. The following is a PodcastOne.com production. He's a comedian known for asking uncomfortable questions to celebrities. The things you really want to know, but are kind of afraid to ask. Uh, by any chance, do you have accidentally... Uh... <laughs> Fart in the catcher's face. Who the hell are you? For God's sake, that kind of damn question. She's a comedian with a no holds barred attitude. Goes, well, I never saw a pregnant woman on stage. Well, apparently, never been to a really bad strip club. <laughs> Together, they'll interview celebrities about, well, everything in a show we call the Stuttering John Podcast. Love, romance, and other lies with Stuttering John and Tammy Pescatelli. Welcome to the Stuttering John Podcast, Love, Romance, and Other Lies with Tammy Pescatelli, who's here right next to me looking super hot and uh, super cute, super sexy, and of course, super funny. Uh. And uh, Tammy and I, we're going to talk a little bit because we are hoping, we think, we think we're going to have uh, our guest, Pat Cooper, a.k.a. Pasquale Caputo, to call in. Uh, and uh, that's thanks to you, Tammy, your friends at Pat. Yeah, Pat, it's a long, weird story, but would you believe somehow we're related by marriage? Not, I mean, my godmother was related to his wife, so not. there's no blood and there's no, you know. It just, it just seems like, and I, mean, I don't know if this is racist. racist you it is, me. it's racist, but it's a, it's a good, all racism isn't bad. No, but it just seems like every Italian person I meet is related to another Italian friend of mine. That's <laughs> it. It's we a, all look alike. No, it, you know, it's a weird thing because my whole life, all everybody would say, to me when I became a comic is, do you know Pat Cooper? Do you know Pat Cooper? And I'm like, uh, yeah, I kind of know Pat Cooper, but I'm not real. I've never met. I didn't meet him until I was well established as a comic. So I don't know anybody to help me. How about that? Well, well, <laughs> well I know him obviously through the Stern show because he used to go on there and just rant. Yes. I mean, you know, it's <laughs> kids and just go crazy and just like, I mean, they even did a bit all in Pat Cooper's family and it was just him, you know. Right. And well, that was a bad one, I think. Right. Yeah, I think that kind of upset everything. At one point he goes to his son, he goes, I love you, son. And his son goes, uh, oh, yeah, really? And he goes, OK, I don't love you. <laughs> he's a really, really super guy. Like he's the guy that you want to have your back in something. Now, now did you guys ever get in a fight, John? Did you ever do do anything to your because I, I, I don't know if he no no he's one of the few but no i didn't you didn't do anything to irritate him ever no no what was your boundary like what was the line that you wouldn't cross with people were there certain people that you would not go up to and say something stupid to uh when they had kids i always kind of like i remember i was supposed to interview kathy lee and uh no it was um it w was frank gifford and kathy lee and they had the kids, and I just kind of... Cody, that's the only one I know, right? Cody and Cassidy. And the one grew up to be beautiful, Cassidy, right? Like, yeah. she's a... But I didn't I didn't, uh, I didn't, didn't want to because, you know, the kids. And then one other time at a Saturday Night Live thing where Charles Barkley was hosting, they did, like, a press conference, and it was right after Michael Jordan's dad had been shot, and the question was something like, are you going to give advice to your dad to not get shot in a car? And it was just, like, something where I just, I just didn't feel right asking it, so... That's it? Those are the only two That's times? That's the only two times. That's hysterical. Yeah, because bowel movements, all that stuff has never been has never been a problem for me. It's always been, I don't know, there's certain things that would make me feel bad. Like, if I asked, like, Joey Adams, how many times have you seen Halley's Comet? It's, 
you know, it's a, it's an old joke. I mean, it's you know, yeah. I don't think that's such a big deal. Like, it's so funny. I I just did a roast with uh, Jackie the Joke Man and uh, you know Steve Grillo and KC. Oh boy, and, and, and Bob Levy. One of the jokes I did with Jackie is Jackie's pissed because um, he, he's pissed because he, he had to be here and and he wanted to go to Belmont. And bet on the horses, and Jackie knows a lot about horses because when he, when he was younger, that's how his mail was delivered. And because uh, <laughs> you know, he's old, obviously. Thank you for explaining it to it me, was. John. That's that's amazing. I can't tell how that joke went over. So who was who was being roasted then? He Jackie was, or you uh, guys were this, all just bagging this, on each this, other? This guy Mike Gilliam hired all of us mm-hmm. to roast him for his 40th birthday, but then it was also a roast on all of us. So I, I wrote all these jokes about everybody. So it was just, I mean, it was a lot of fun. What was the best one that someone did against you? You know, I don't remember, you know. I, I mean, it's all, I really don't. I don't remember any of the jokes about me, uh, per se. You think that has to do with your personality? That's Like, that's why you could do the things you did going up to people and saying those things? That really shows something. Like, that's a level of confidence, I guess. Yeah, I me, mean, I hold it all. I made another joke about Jackie. I said, you know, Jackie made one of the biggest blunders in show business history. He entered it. <laughs> <laughs> what I love is, honestly, I love your laugh. I love that you know the joke, you wrote it, and it still makes you laugh. It killed. <laughs> That's awesome. But, uh, you know, so it, 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 I, it was a lot of fun, but I did that. And, uh, you know, so, so anyway, so the Tammy and I are scrambling because we were supposed to have – you are obviously, you know, friends with a lot of famous people, so you... Not as much. You worked on The Tonight Show. You had, I mean, listen, I know comics. That's why I know lots of comics. Yeah. We all know, I mean, comedy is such a small industry, so we all know people. But people are busy, and they have things to do. And New York and L.A., it's just different sometimes. And Yeah. You know? But, but, but you know, so you are friends with Sherry Shepard from The View, right? Yeah, Sherry. Sherry's supposed to do the show, but she's trying to do some things in her life, so she had to re, re, uh, reschedule with us. And, and then we were working on Lisa Lampanelli, who I and love. And she's got an opening, so she's in rehearsal, so we're going to probably talk to her she has uh, an, later on. She has, uh, she, she has an opening? I think. Well, I, right. I think she's, um, I, I don't know exactly what she's doing, so I don't want to say the wrong thing, but I think she's coming to Broadway. I think that's kind of what she's working yes. on. Um, Jenny McCarthy's going to call in for us. Yeah. And, we had, you know, yeah. but we went crazy. Last night, I found it out. I found out that we didn't have anybody, and I was trying to reach you. You are like literally. You would have thought I was a bill collector trying to find <laughs> you. Your your text. You're tweeting me that your phone died. So I'm like driving in. I have my son in the back, and I'm trying to drive because we don't live in New York. We live in Pennsylvania. Cause, I'm so sorry about that. No, I try. I, listen, that's a choice to make a better life for him, so he can be a normal human being. No, look, look, and not be. I tried. Corrupted. I tried. I mean, you know, J- Jackie the Joke Man, Michael Rappaport, uh, uh, Gretchen Bonaducci, David Feldman, Jim Florentine, Modi, uh, Anthony Cumia. All right, are we going back and forth? Okay, Bonnie McFarlane, <laughs> Chris D'Italia, Bert Kresher, Jessica Curson, John Enos, Brian Edwards, Joe Cochran. We got a lot of them. Yeah. And, so it's and, all there. And Gilbert Godfrey. But anyway, you finally were able to pull off getting Pat Cooper on. Maybe if he answers. Who knows? I don't know. We, we, you know, we should pro- we'd probably try, Garrett, and see if we can get him on. He's Apparently he has a problem hearing. Well, I think, yeah, we all so get older. We, so should we all be like, this is going to be the screaming interview? Listen. It's great for a stutterer. You don't stutter when you scream. Really? Yeah. You're yeah. like, that's why Mel Tillis never stuttered when he when sang? Singing, screaming, accents, it's almost impossible. You know what accents do you do, John Melendez? Um, it goes to eleven. It's your fucking wife. <laughs> <laughs> Spinal tap. You know, I can speak in a bad English accent, and I won't stutter ever. <laughs> That's hysterical. Yeah. I made my eye twitch. That's how bad it. <laughs> I, I know it's awful. But I morph accents, by the way. That's people always say, like, "Oh, aren't you from Brooklyn?" No, that's because my husband is. I absorb accents. I'm the worst. If I'm in the South for a week doing shows, I come up with a little bit of a Southern drawl. I really, I don't know what it is. I just, I, well, I'm originally from Cleveland. We didn't have an accent. So I will say this. I, uh, you know, I love the people of Philadelphia, but I will say the worst accent ever is the Philadelphian accent. 
I mean, just that sn- snarling. Of the, the It's just it's impossible to listen to. Do you agree or do you find? Because I know the Long Island one, which is where I'm from, is, is, is a close second. But I think the Philly one is. Oh, is, is he there? Is he on? Oh, my God. Pat Cooper. Hello, Pat. Hello. Pat Cooper, how you doing? Stuttering John and Tammy Pescatelli with the legendary. God Very... bless you. You're still stuttering? <laughs> yes. Yes, I am, Pat. How you doing? If he paid you for every stutter, you'd be a billionaire. <laughs> Thank you for calling in, honey. I'm so glad that you did. Well, because you're my mentor, but unfortunately, I don't meant it. <laughs> <laughs> so how you doing, Pat? I'm okay. I'm a little old, but it's, uh, you know, it's over. I'm going to be 87 years old. I had a great career, and thank God uh, you're talking to me, and it's nice hearing from you. Uh, Are you still performing? No, no, I don't perform no more, because when I retired, I said I will retire. I'm about 11 inches from death. (laughs) <laughs> no, he really, but you know, I worked with him up until right before he retired, and his show was amazing. We were selling out arenas because of him, and he, I mean, it was our, he would, our, like, no problem. I remember Rodney, right before he died, God rest his soul, who was one of the most amazing comics, but he couldn't remember his act, so his wife would tell him through an earpiece. I know, I saw. Pat knew it. I, yeah, I, I saw. <laughs> Everybody I, should retire, then die. <laughs> That's the way. You should, not, you should not turn around and and just say, I'm going to keep going. You know, I got some friends of mine who are now working at an angle. Or you could just die on stage like Dick Sean. Because it's over. <laughs> when it's over, it's over. There's nothing you can do about it. But if you're going to still say, I'm going out there and make the people laugh, they're not laughing when they see you walking out there with a crutch. Well... Do you they miss know there's something wrong with you or something wrong with the crutch? Do you do you <laughs> do you miss like doing stand up and making people laugh, Pat? I'm sorry. Do you miss getting out there and making people laugh? Let me tell you the truth, and I don't lie to you. <clears throat> I've been funny, funny from the day I was born. Every day I do something and say something to somebody funny. I have a naturally funny mind, uh, and. Uh, so I don't miss it. I mean, I can't go out there and say, let me grab the money. Even if they don't laugh or not, that's no good. If it's not right the way I'm working, I will not. In other words, if I lose my tools for the stage, I won't waste and take people's money. I just won't do it. So where are you living now? I live in jail. <laughs> <laughs> it's none of your business, John. He lives in Nunya. Uh, I no. live in New York. I lived in Vegas for 40 years, and I uh, lived in Florida for three years. And uh, when I lost my wife, I said, I know that's it. I'll stay uh, where, where I was born and raised. In fact, to tell you the truth, I went back to my uh, to my childhood because I'm back to New York, and uh, you know I love the city, and I'm, uh, I'm going to die here and then be buried in Ve- in Vegas. Why Vegas? Well, I, you know I I, uh, I bought an urn because I earned it. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to set Pat up jokingly, right? Pat, remember this with my mother-in-law, and Pat's like. I- I'm not putting up with any woman like that, right? Do you remember when you came to Brooklyn? Yeah. She said, well, you know, uh, you know, to to wind up, I was born in Brooklyn, but you you got punished. <laughs> you married a guy from Brooklyn. You, know, you should have married a guy from Ashtabula. <laughs> that's where I was born, oh. originally in Ohio. So, Pat, that's, you the only, I... that, that's the only city that's got no taste in grapes. Do you do you have a girlfriend? No, no, my, my, I left that, I lost the best that's uh, 11 years ago, and I, uh, I don't want to start something I can't finish and start, you know, uh, start hitting on people. I don't, uh, that, that day is over. I had great, great days, and that's enough. I'm old. I'm dead. That's it. So you don't have, so you don't have sex anymore? Well, to, to who? Let me tell you a very fast story. <laughs> my doctor says, listen, you've got to take the, yellow, the, 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 the blue pill. And I said, okay, because he's maybe having a problem. I said, all right. So I took the blue pill that night, and I stood around for about four hours, and then I went to sleep, and the doctor called me the next day. The true story he says, how did you do? Did you get an erection? I said, well, no. He says, who were you with? I said, I got to be with somebody. <laughs> I swear to Christ, I was four hours sitting on the end of my bed waiting for something to happen. <laughs> He says, you dumb, you got to have somebody with you to, to entice you. I said, how do you spell it? <laughs> so so have you used the blue pill while while being with another woman? 
And it's, I'll tell you how bad it is. I'm reading you now on my phone. I got close caption on my phone. That's how old I'm getting. <laughs> In what fact, is it? when I dream, when I dream, my dream is in closed caption. <laughs> 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 it's so good hearing from you, buddy. Yesterday, it's a lot of good yesterdays with you and my lovely lady there. I, uh, I still scream that she didn't win that contest because that's against the law. They should have arrested everybody. Is that last comp standing? Yeah. Uh, she she uh. was the best, and she's still the best, and she's a naturally talented lady. Then she married a guy, a nice man, a producer who don't produce. <laughs> well, that's, that's my friend, that guy. That guy is Luca Polanco, who's, who's actually a comic. Well, you know what happens? It's just great. She's got a great kid, and that's, that's, the, that, that's the reward. Pat. That's the reward. They both have a, a nice youngster, and uh, that, that's, that's more important than all the nonsense. Well, that's so true, except that I still don't cook. But, Pat, what is the thing, like, right now, what is annoying you the most? Like, when you watch the news and stuff, what's on your mind about all that stuff? Uh, you want the way I feel? Yeah, I do. The, kid, the young people today don't have a chance because the old people spoil them. And when your mother and father said no, there was only one no you got. You didn't negotiate and say, well, I want to go. And when your father and mother said no... That was it. And if you don't like it, there's the door. Today, yeah. That's called child abuse. Yeah, no, I hear you. I have to go through a negotiation with my 10-year-old. Well, years ago, years ago, you listened that you were, that was your father's house and your mother's house. And, and I would tell my father, what are we eating tonight? He said, food. <laughs> hey, Pat, you know, I know, are you, are you, are you, uh, are you still talking to Howard? Are you still do that show? I, I, no, I, uh, I, I went after him because I thought somebody had to, and uh, I'm, I'm not saying it because I'm proud of anything. I just think somebody had to talk to this guy and let him know that he's full of crap. Oh yeah, because I wasn't there anymore. I, I left, as you know, to, do, to be the announcer on the Tonight Show. Believe no, it or no, not. No, no. What happened is he, he, you know, when, when you retire or when you remarry or whatever you do, that's his personal business. I respect that. But when you tell the people out there who made you that he's really not that guy, that's a lot of crap. I am who I am. I can't say I'm not me because I made nine cents, a hundred million dollars. They made a ten, ten cents. It's me. Yeah. They say, did you do it? Yes, I did. And you know something? Nobody will question it. Well, yeah, because I mean, like the reason why, because I, I just recently had, you know, had extended the olive branch to Howard because because we weren't speaking for a while, and I finally just. You know, I, I said, no, Al, Al, there's no branch for this guy because he doesn't have a tree. Well, he actually did. You know, you know, he wrote me back and said that, you know, that everything was cool. So, I mean, because, you, you know, Pat, well, he's not doing you a favor. He should have put he should have turned around and come over to you. He's supposed to be the winner. He's supposed to be the leader. And if there's a, some problem within the, the show, why doesn't he come over? So we got a problem. You know, look at Jackie. Jackie is uh, is uh, is. is it's no longer there. I'm no longer there, but that's okay. I don't. I didn't. My my career wasn't, uh, you know, uh, going on that show. I went on that show because I know it was good for me, and, and and it did a lot of good for me. I made a lot of enemies for going on that show, also. But that was my choice to go on that show, and I was a big hit on that show. And uh, even my family came on the show. I know, I know, they did all in all in Pat Cooper's family. No, I'm just saying that for me. But I didn't back down, and I didn't, when my mother came on there and my daughter came on there, I didn't say I didn't want to go on when I would say your family's not. So put them on because they ought to be ashamed of themselves. I went the other way. I said, just because it's your mother or your daughter, and they start yelling and screaming, I said, you can't yell and scream. I made something of myself, you idiots. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just saying for me, Pat, it was time to just get it out of my system you know, apologize for anything I've said, and then I don't have to carry that burden anymore. And now, well, that's what's burden. I got to be a burden to tell him to twi what I felt about him. That's he should turn around and say, oh, "It's about time somebody told me." Well, no, I, no, I'm just he, saying. For me, it was it, it was better for me, and I think for him to have some. All right, that's okay. That's okay. You know what I mean? I don't hate the man. I don't dislike the man. I don't talk, talk, bad mouth him. I bad mouth him where uh, right right around the corner from his studio. When I went out, Opie and Anthony, and I really blew my stack, particularly when his crew kept saying, get that man off the air. And I said, you don't get me off the air. This is not Nazi Germany. If I want to talk about that boss of yours, I'll talk till I drop. 
I said, if he's, what, if he's angry at me, let him come in here and talk to me, but he's not a man. He don't want to talk to me. You know why? Because he can't handle it. Have you done Anthony Cumia's show? Because I do Anthony's show all the time. I don't go on that no more because Anthony got fired. No, but Anthony has his own show. I'm actually doing... Well, Anthony has it in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Anthony, Anthony lost the job. I don't know why that's none of my business, but the, his partner who's got another partner, they're not going to call me back. You know why? Because they're cowards. <laughs> well, they're wait. ashamed of themselves. They're cowards. I'm the only guy on that show, got on the show, spoke from my heart, and spoke what I thought was the truth. No. If they didn't like me, fine. No, but here's but the thing. Don't turn your back on me. No, but here's the thing. Anthony would love to have you on his show. No, he wanted me to go to Long Island. I says, I ain't going to go around the corner. No, he lives in Manhattan. I mean, that's where we are now. Well, you know, his brother, his brother called me, and you know, it's like they're making they're making a a, a, a a plan. I said, no, no, you want me on? I'll go on, but I'm not going to go bend over backwards because I don't need I don't need anything. No, I know, but, 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 but wait, I don't know if you're hearing me. Anthony's studio is right in Manhattan on 35th Street. Listen, I did I did what's this uh, show a couple of weeks ago? Uh, uh, for Christ's sake. Uh, you know, the guy that did the, the commercial, Affleck, Affleck. What's oh, uh, Gilbert okay. Godfrey. Mm -hmm. I did his show. You ought to turn it on. He said it's the best show he's ever heard. See, I and believe I didn't it. ask him to say that. I didn't want to do the show, but they, you know, they said, Pat, you got to do something. You can't stay home. I did an hour and a half. No, well, Pat, you've always been a great guest. I mean, I, on Stern, I well, mean, you why, were like one of the why favorites. Must I have, why must I have people, you know, shun me? When I turn around and do good shows for them, and then all of a sudden, it's like, you know, Robert De Niro now. They're all going, oh, we love Robert De Niro. He's one of us now. He's cursing. I curse. They call me a bastard. <laughs> I've, been cursing, I've been cursing when I was born. Instead of saying, Mom, I said, oh, God. Well, could I just, is it possible that if I have Anthony's producer call you, will you do his show in Manhattan? Well, all right. That's okay. Hey, I got, the, I got nothing against these people, but... But you know, some don't be a phony. Don't be uh, a phony. He's not. Don't be. Let me let me explain something to you. They turned me down a hundred times when I was on Howard's show. I said, "What? I don't care if I'm doing Howard. I'll do anybody's show. Don't you don't uh, turn me down because it's Howard. Who is Howard? Jesus Christ! <laughs> and how dare you? How dare you even put me in that category? And they never put me on until they made up with Howard. And I said, "Listen, I didn't make up with Jesus, and he's more important than Howard." <laughs> and who I said, so don't give me that crap. Howard dies like everybody with all his money, and Howard has to learn how to be a man and has to turn around and say, I'm the luckiest man on the planet because I'm not a talent. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an angry man like everybody else. I'm angry, too. I made a living by it. Hey, Pat, I, I, you know, I, are you still, are you talking to your kids now or are you not talking to them? Who? You. I haven't spoken to Howard, and it's, it's got to be a few years. I don't want to talk to him. No, your kids, your children. No, listen to me. Listen to me. <laughs> I don't want to talk to him. I don't have to talk to him. He's got to under understand this is my planet, too. Just because he's a bigger name, and that's his planet, we got to kiss his ass. I didn't kiss my mother's or father's ass. And I said, that's not going to happen. And what makes me a better guess is because I say what's on my mind. I Pat. But but who in who in this industry, like all the because you've been in it forever, show business, who in the whole show business do you wish you didn't piss off? <laughs> Is there anybody you regret fighting? I with? did something on on uh, Tom Snyder. And I was proud I did it to sit to tell the audience out there, America, who I didn't like and who I thought was disrespectful to me. And I wasn't going to stand for it. And I didn't give a goddamn if it cost me my career. I said, you don't do that. My mother and father couldn't disrespect me. So what can you tell me for some of these assholes that I work with? They ought to be ashamed of themselves. Send their emissary to my room and tell me what to do. I said, I'll do what they ask me when they pay me. So what did and you when they don't pay me, they can kiss my fuzzles. So tell John some of the people that you told Tom Snyder. Do you remember? Well, a couple of priests up in heaven, I think. I don't know. I, uh, Look, when you tell the truth, they don't like it. Now, now everybody's spilling the beans. When I did it, I was a bad guy. Now they're all raising their price. <laughs> you still can't tell the truth in this industry, trust me. No, I tell it the way I say it. I'm not here to, to defend the industry. I'm just trying to tell you, I work with some of the biggest names who are full of crap. 
And when I told them they were, they were like, wait a minute, you're not going to work with me no more. I said, goodbye. All right, Pat, I got to ask you this, because on the Stern Show, like, as you remember, we did the all in Pat Cooper's family. And you can do that a hundred times. I'm not angry at that because that was the truth that was on the air. No, and no. Not only that, it was funny and it was honest. No, but have you made up? With, are you talking to your kids? I don't talk to none of them. Oh. I don't want them in my life. My whole family is dead. Oh, jeez, Pat. And some of my kids, my, who have, who have, who have <laughs> kids, tell their kids, which are my grandkids, that, that I'm not their grandfather. So you don't, talk, so you don't, so you don't even talk to the grandchildren? Who? You don't even talk to the grandchildren? Listen, I got married again, and I got grandchildren from a second marriage. Everybody took a powder until I had to pay for the caravan because the college, which I did with a smile. But, the, you know, it's a whole new bullshit, man. I don't understand people. So let me ask you something, Pat. Out of all the, sl- talk to the The last time I talked to my son, I says, why would you throw pennies at me at the Copacabana and break my glasses? He didn't know what they said. So you know why? Because you're a dickhead. And you're a disgrace to anything to do that to me. I did nothing wrong to you people, but you're jealous of my success. Instead of saying, gee, what a nice thing, and you throw pennies at me on the Copacabana. Why do you throw pennies at you? Because you know what? They, my mother, my all of them, they were jealous. The, because yeah. you know why? They would say, oh, my God, what, where, where did he come from? Because everybody was saying I was a funny kid, and my parents said he's malad in the head. There's something wrong with him. And then when I went on Jackie Gleason, the next day was Sunday. They all turned on me like, well, well, here he goes, the big shot. Here's a note, pal. You're not funny. I said, oh, there you go. So. That's what Italian people do, though. They, they, they always find something wrong with what you've done. They've, so so you cured cancer. Well, you didn't do your dishes. Oh, that's what fucking parents I and family do. Nobody, listen, <laughs> listen to me. How many mothers on, on, the, on the radio and on the television when they said that when their son or their daughter was going to get executed, and the mother said, that's my boy. I love him. He's a good boy. <laughs> I didn't execute nobody. I killed a fly. Uh, <laughs> so, Pat, Pat, who, who do you despise most right now in show business? Jesus. Or like- the, guy I, the guy I loved working with more than anybody was a man called Sergio Franchi. Okay, but that was my that I, I worked with Sinatra. I worked with all of them, and they were fine. Okay, but that was the best guy to, I ever worked. We had more fun. We didn't take ourselves serious. We made a great living. Everything was fine. He lived across the street from me in Vegas. I mean, we were pals. He was the name star. God bless him. He was a friend. He was you know when show business was over, we hung out. We had laughs. But some of the people today, they go, well, you know, you're, you're where I'm a little bigger than you. And then they send their emissaries who don't have the brain, some decency to be on their own. So they got to work for somebody else and, and send a message and fight for somebody that's a coward. But out of all the, the – let me just ask this time, then Tammy wants to ask. Out of all the comics now that you see, because you're one of the greatest comics ever – do you like who? Like who do you like? Who do you dislike out the of the new batch? The greatest comics ever are dead. Well, and one it, of them, one of them who's brilliant is a guy called Jerry Lewis, but people call him a clown. This man is brilliant. This well, man is brilliant, but they call him a clown. And this is why Dean, everything worked fine. Dean went on his own, became a bigger major star. So everybody, everybody got a good piece of piece of the, you know of the wealth. Everybody, uh, you know, and some of them who became. Who, who, who worked tough, who worked tough. When they became, all of a sudden they changed. All of a sudden their blood was different, their heart don't pound like everybody else. And I said, well, I want to stay away from these people. I mean, we all die with all their money, with all their health. You know, but I don't understand it. The world's being taken over and we're blind. But I'm saying out of the new batch of comics, out of the younger comics now, who do you like and who do you dislike? You want to know, in my opinion, what's wrong with comedy? Yes. Sure. They're not orchestrated. They don't have any rhythm. Ah. You know, the old the old guys, the old the Sid Caesars, the Gleasons, and all these kind of people, and these, these stand-up people years ago, they had an orchestration. They had a plan. It was wonderful. And then you dance, you dance, you did impressions, you did everything. You were, a, you were an entertainer. Now you do six minutes, you're going to wind up in a career. <laughs> <laughs> it's true with the YouTube. Pat, what are some of the stories? Do you remember uh, how you were telling us that you opened for Frank Sinatra for all those years? You worked with him. 
What's something? I don't work. I only worked with him once, honey. Oh, was it just once? Now let me tell you something, because they thought I was Pat Henry. Okay. See, Pat Henry. Pat Henry worked with him for fourteen years, and I I got the job. I should have never worked with him because it was too close to my Jackie Gleason show, and I didn't know how to conduct myself in front of this man. And let me tell you another story, because I was as scared to ad-lib anything, because I'm working with the man, and I said, I better just stick to my, my, my act and don't, don't even ad-lib anything. So one night I ad lib there was a guy called Phil Harris, who was married to Alice Faye. He yells out to me, he says, bring the man on. I said, what's the matter, you can't get a girl? <laughs> and that was an ad lib, and Sinatra turns around and tells me not to do that no more. And I said, Frank, I don't tell you what songs to sing. Don't tell me how to be funny. Wow. I'm waiting for you. Wow. And I made friends with Sinatra after that job. Wow. I'm surprised, I'm surprised they didn't fire me because I did 56 shows with him. And I didn't do, I was so miserable with that show because I, I, I felt all by myself. <laughs> but I didn't say nothing. I'm then, surprised they didn't the, kill you. <laughs> here's the coup de grace. When Wait, I left but Fra- Frank Sinatra... <laughs> Three days later, I went downtown to the Fremont. We're yeah. working with a guy called Joey, the, 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 uh, the black guy, Joe, who was with Count Basie. Yeah. Uh, I don't, yeah. Joe, uh, Joe, oh, Christ. It doesn't matter. Anyway, he was the nicest guy in the world. Well, what happens? A few, few months later, they all made fun. Pat goes from Frank Sinatra downtown. A few years later, Sinatra went downtown. These same people who made fun of me, they ran down with Frank because they're not individuals. They were kissing Frank's butt. If Frank would have went to hell, they would have went too. <laughs> if Frank went to hell with me, I would have told him to kiss my ass. Hey, hey. Nobody does that to me. I respect people. Nobody's better. I do my best thing, and everybody's are scared to stand up for their dignity. Where's the dignity? Well, Pat, hey, uh... <clears throat> Are you, uh, I mean, who do you like? Do you like uh, Hillary or Donald Trump? <laughs> I like Donald Trump. I like his ego. <laughs> Donald Trump's <laughs> ego was born on a Tuesday. His body attached on a Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> He's got balls. He's got balls. And now what's happening, it started out to me, in my opinion, this is a toy. He never in his best day thought he could be president, and he's going to be president. So you have all for Donald Trump. Today, what happened today in Florida, that's going to help him. Well, it could. It certainly could. Our president said something yesterday. He says, you know, this is terrible. Everybody said it was terrible. What the hell is he turning around and say? They will never, never make them. They will know the mistake they made. If we're going to die like that, we'll tear you apart. But we got scared. What are we scared about? We're the toughest com- country in the world. What good is having a knife if you can't slice a bologna? <laughs> hey, hey, Pat, because you've been around for a lot, who was your most favorite president and who was your least favorite? Harry Truman, when he said, drop the bomb on them bastards. <laughs> now they're on our team. They're playing baseball with us. So who, so who was your look least at favorite? Up, look at that hypocrisy. And then he fires General MacArthur, who told him, go into Korea because you're going to do it later on. And he said, you're fired. I saw what happened to this guy who dropped the bomb. Now he's firing one of the greatest generals in the world. And so, now we got North Korea and South Korea. So wait a second. So, so, it, so Truman's one of your favorite? What? So, so was Truman, was, his, was he one of your favorite presidents? No, no. I'm much on that. You know, I don't go back that far. Well, who's... I got a problem with yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, Pat. I think you remember way more. Like, what was your most favorite gig that you ever did the thing you were the most proud of i did a quite a few of them i loved and waited always to wait the westchester broadway theater i loved theater in the round so much it was better than sex <laughs> i loved working theater in the round with that situation the way it was i i worked every major club in this country i i, I worked places where i bombed and got a great a great review and it scared the hell out of me and, uh, you know, so I, I had great, great career, a great career for a man that's supposed to be, you know, an idiot. So, uh, so My I'm, I'm sorry. My comic was a man called Shecky Green. So, uh. Did you hear me? Yeah, we did. Shecky yeah. Green. Yeah. Shecky Green. You remember Shecky Green? Yes. 
one of the greatest stand-up comics I ever saw. When I saw him, I was going to quit show business. That's Why? how great this guy was. In Vegas, he was number one. And uh, now nobody heard from him anymore. And uh, he's back in California just sitting in a rocking chair. And uh, there, there you go. So, Pat, getting back to my question, who is your least favorite president ever? The least? The one that's there now. I knew. <laughs> why is that, is. Pat? Tell me why. Huh? Why? Because he did not do anything with, with, with love and determination. He's not a tough man. You can't be president and not be tough. But someone... He's are... worried about tomorrow. How are they going to talk about him? Someone argued that he took out bin Laden, didn't he? He what? He took out bin Laden. I'm trying to get that, that word out. He he killed Osama bin Laden. No, no. The one that killed bin Laden, he committed suicide when he saw 35 uh, 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 guns at him. So he, he got killed. What else is no? What? How did... How why, did... Why, why, do we, why do we go after an Iraq? We turned around, we're back there again. Yeah, well, we should never have gone there in the first place, don't you agree? Well, that, there's your answer. And then we got the Bush, and then the son of the Bush, and then the cousin of the Bush. There's a lot of Bushes. What's that? We got to get we got to get guys with balls and women with balls. We got Clinton now. We get her now. We got a pre listen. The president, Bill Clinton, he dirtied the he dirtied the old Oval Office when he made he had sex with that broad. <laughs> he came, Monica. He came on our carpet. Because yeah, but JFK our, did it. That's our, that's our American room, not his. Well, you know how many presidents had sex and had, you know, I mean, there were so many who had affairs. Well, what about Thomas Jefferson? He's a guy that had slaves and he was screwing the slaves. I know. So uh, we're looking at hypocrisy. I think what's got to happen in the future, we're not going to use sex as a weapon. We're going to use sex as what we're supposed to do. <laughs> what's that? What's that, Pat? I don't care what it is. The worst thing is, I mean, if you're going to cheat, you don't have to cheat. You've got to sit down with the wife and say, this is where I'm at. If that's not working, go. But don't turn around and turn around and say, we, you know, there are weak men and then there are strong men. There are weak women and strong women. When you were married, did you ever cheat, Pat? Huh? When you were married, did you ever cheat? I cheated all the time. <laughs> I cheated. I'm cheating now and I got no woman here. <laughs> It's called masturbation. Uh, oh, oh, so you never were with another woman. Patty would have uh, killed listen, him. Listen to me. Listen to me. My sex life is so boring, but it's only great for me. I don't have to share it with anybody. <laughs> and if I did it and they said, raise your right hand, did you do it? Yes. Would you do it again? Yes. Only faster. <laughs> now, what did you think of Muhammad Ali? He just passed away. Did you have any experiences with him? I was in his company. He was a wonderful man. He believed what he, what, what he did. And the hypocrites who went to his funeral, those who blasted him, those who call him the N-word, hoped he died, not are up his ass. Here's a man that stood up and said, Death, I ain't going to fight those people. They didn't hurt me. Why the hell should I kill those people? He was a hundred million percent right. Now they're all going, what a great, what a great. These are the people that screwed him. Well, I, I was more of a Joe Frazier fan, and I kind of thought that Ali, you know, kind of mistreated Joe Frazier. I was ringside at the first fight, and who you think was in front of him? It was Frank Sinatra taking pictures. Yeah, that's at, uh, that I was at the garden. I the hospital when Joe Frazier was there. I met, I met Ali, I met Joe Frazier, I met them all wonderful people, you know, and everybody did what they had to do, and uh, that's the end of that story. I had a great life. I met a lot of nice people. I am no longer in show business. I'm Pasquale Caputo again. Yeah, I know. So I mean, so so you were an Ali guy. So that was your favorite boxer. I was a great. I was a fighter for great people who knew how to fight. I saw Willie Pep. I saw guys that were one some of the greatest greatest fighters in the world. But the fighters today don't do that. They only fight twelve rounds. And you know, you got to be careful that they don't that, that they don't get a you know a pain in their leg. Then they got to get exercise. They got to call a major. Three years ago, they turned around. They fought with, with headaches. They fought with every they pain. They fought and didn't get paid the money. Yeah, well, that's what they're doing. Like, they're doing the same thing with the NFL right now. Don't you think, Pat? They're making it so lame with the NFL. They're, you know. It, there, well, that's a, this controversy breeds money more than, com more than comedy, more than great acting. Controversy. People want to know who's screwing who. People want to know who's cheating who. 
That's what it's all about. Instead of getting down to the basic and say, we ain't going to let that happen, we discuss it, we negotiate, and years and years go by. Hey, Pat, have you ever been with a celebrity? Have you ever had, had sex with a, like, like a, a woman that was famous? Did I ever what? Did you ever have sex with a, with, with a woman that was famous? No, because I, I, I married one. Oh, okay. It was married. It was famous to me. I married one. I married the first one was a good woman, too, but her family screwed her up because I became successful. That's another story, but it's boring. <laughs> okay. You want to know the truth? We're all human. Yes. Why don't people mind their goddamn business about who's going with who, who ain't going with who? What if you turn around and a guy says, I cheated my wife 13 times, and he saves the world? Oh, we, we forget that he screwed everybody. <laughs> so there's a lot of hypocrisy out there. It's nobody's goddamn business what people do. You know, men are weak, women are weak, so what the hell is the difference? We, we punish them, yeah, and if you touch a 16-year-old, you go to jail. Now, no. next time you go over a woman, you've got to have a piece of paper saying that she's of age. Next, you're going to get the blood test. Next, you want to know her mother's maiden name. It's all sick. Well, yeah, I know. It, it's, it's, it's getting a little weird out there. I mean, Well, I'm weird, too. But do you think that's because of reality shows? Do you ever watch any of those reality shows, Pat, like the Kardashians? You know the Kardashians? That's the biggest joke in the world. But you know something? I give them credit. They got away with nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Here we're worried about who's screwing who. She made a porno. Not everybody wants to make a porno, and it don't mean nothing. The first one that made the porno and came out with it, she went to jail and she died young. Who's that? Remember the one, the, the one that the, Linda the Lovelace, first, huh? Linda Lovelace, that yes, lady. Linda Lovelace should have been a trillionaire. I know, isn't it sick, Pat? Doesn't that it make you sick? Day. She made four. What was it? Forty dollars, they said, or four hundred dollars. And then, and then the guy that had the sex with her on the screen, he went to jail. Doesn't it make you sick, Pat, that like people like the Kardashians, that they become well, fake? because I know there's talent walking the street, can't get a job, and these people did it. To, you know, they buffaloed everybody. Yeah, so doesn't that make you sick? It doesn't make me sick because I had my moments, and I can't, I can't say, well, I'm jealous. I'm jealous for nobody. I didn't expect to get far as, as I did. Y yeah, okay. So, you know, today, today, there's no naturally people around. Do you watch any television now? Yes, I watch CNN and I'll find out if I'm in, I'll get it drafted again. <laughs> <laughs> so what else do you do for fun now, Pat? I go out with friends of mine. I, uh, you know, I, I, I don't do much. I, uh, you know, I, we go to dinner, we have a few laughs. I talk to guys like you, which is such a nice thing. And when Tammy called me to tell me about a mutual friend that I was passed on, I love her for calling me. So, you know, I, I got a lot of nice friends, and I'm, I'm a pretty nice, pretty nice guy uh, at my old age now. So I'm in good shape. Yeah, no, Pat, I used to love when you were on. I mean, you were one of the best guests we've ever had. Well, if that's a fact, then I know I did good. And I, I don't dislike the man. I don't hate him. I just think he should grow up, but it's too late. The ship didn't sail. It sunk. Well, you know, he made up with me, Pat, so maybe there's, you know, still time for you guys to, you know, to make up. I wouldn't make up with my family if they were alive. <laughs> I would not because they are disgraziata. Disgraziata, I remember that. That's and I don't deserve deal. that. If I deserve that, that's okay. But they're on both sides with disgraziata. <laughs> hey, Pat, you know what's so funny? Because, you know, um, Tammy and I are going to go do Artie Lang show. Do you know Artie Lang? That I what? Do you know Artie Lang? Uh, Artie Lang, I love him, but he's not funny. Oh, <laughs> no. no. Really? You don't think so? Excuse me. That's my opinion, but I love <laughs> him, respect him. He's not a funny man. I saw him at the Pagata, and I was embarrassed because he's not a funny man. And I don't care if he gets mad at me. I'm going to tell it the way it is. I don't think he's funny. The girl in that room with you was funny. No, Tammy's very funny. Um, well, but, but I don't mean to hurt his feeling. I saw him. He had his own radio or television show. He's very bland. He's an orange without the juice. Well, I mean, Artie's my friend, but why don't you think he's funny? I love him. He's a nice man. I respect him. But I got, no, he got lucky on, on Howard Stern, and he became a big, big name. But all of a sudden, that ain't there anymore. You didn't think he was funny on, on Howard's show? No, 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 no. Did you no. like Jackie better? Who? Jackie the Joke Man? Did you like Jack Jackie the Joke Man was only funny if his jokes were funny. Yeah. I saw Jackie the Joke Man at the, at, 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 at the roast at the Friars. He's not a stand-up kind of comic, but if the jokes are not funny, he's in deep shit. Yeah, yeah.
<laughs> I well, love him and I respect him, but let's talk what's fact. I can't run up the street, you know, up, up the stairs anymore because I'm old. But that's reality. I can't say I'm going to run up the thing when I know I can't do it. It's all bullshit. Well, Pat, what about there's so much going on. Like you're the guy of showbiz. You're the guru. What about the whole thing with like Kelly Ripa and Michael Strahan and she didn't come to work? What would you have done? She is the luckiest girl in the world. She should get on if she's a Catholic make a novena. <laughs> because first of all, Michael Stranahan is lucky. He, he can do what he wants to do. Why has he got to answer to her? She was lucky that the Regis Philbin kind of thing broke up, and she wound up with it. Now she becomes a little bit of a Hitler. <laughs> Who the hell gives a shit about her? What has she done that we got it? She's lucky, girl. Kiss the floor. She doesn't. Th she's not a thankful person. She, got, she ain't got that talent that, that, that she wound up with seven, eight years on that show. I don't see once that she turns around and says, you know some Michael, God bless you. I'll tell you how much I love you. I'll walk you to the next show. Yeah, but, but she's got no class. Plus, you know, she thinks that she don't pee. But, but Pat. <laughs> she doesn't pee. But, Pat, don't you think she's pretty hot? Like, you know, wouldn't you like to have sex with her? I can't hear. Don't you think she's, she's pretty hot? Like, wouldn't you want to have sex with her? No, no. No, no. You're sitting with a girl that I would rather have sex with Aww. than any broad on the, on the planet because she's honest. <laughs> Aw, that's all I have. I am a little bit honest, but... No, you're honest, honey, and I'm not trying to make you feel good. You're a lady's lady, and you're a comedy's comedy. Listen, but you know something? You're, you, you go out, and you work, and you do, and you, you, you... I never heard you complain publicly. No, Tammy's a sweetheart and very funny. What do you think about guys like uh, Dane Cook? Because he was huge in it for a while. Who? That comic Dane Cook. Oh, wait a minute. Is that the guy from England? Uh, no. Uh, no. I don't know. Who do you mean by Eng – uh, maybe that's Ricky Gervais. Who oh, do you I know who you're talking about. You mean uh, the guy that works arenas? Yeah. Well, you know what he reminds me of? What? Uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, God. Andrew Dice Clay's got to understand he's no longer the Dice Man. What is he now? He's actually got because a show. He, no, he, thinks he, he thinks he's still going to work on that poetry. He made a lot, a lot of money, and he was wonderful in the arenas. That's over. He never betted himself. He, he kept saying more curses that I never heard of, and it's the worst. And he's not funny anymore, and he's got a series that he needs help. Who do you think, who do you think was better, um, Andrew Dice Clay or Sam Kennison? Sam Kennison was a better, funnier man than Andrew Dice. Andrew Dice was more of a character. Yeah, it was more of a character. And when he finished the poetry, the poetry, he, he drained it. He drained it. And then he, he came up empty. And he is not a funny man today because he forgot that he was never a real funny man, a creative man. He <laughs> thinks creativity is cursing and cursing and cursing and cursing. Listen, I curse, but you have to have a reason. You guys are going to make it so I never work again. Uh, no, like, all my friends okay. aren't funny. Oh, no, it's fine. Well, well <laughs> Pat, like, who out of the comics now do you think is funny besides Tammy? Uh, I don't. I haven't been. I haven't been down there. She was working down there. Out to Brad. What's his name? Brad. That was on television. Brad Garrett. Brad Garrett. You know, turn around and uh, he was going to. He wanted me to replace Andrew Dice Clay a couple of years ago. And if the money they offered me, I, I, left in, I left in his face, and he wasn't in front of me. Uh, do you think that Johnny Depp hit his wife? Well, he had a couple of series. I mean, he was good with the, you know, with the first series he was on. Then he had a couple after that. And you know something? You know, just because you're funny in the first series, that don't mean you're going to be funny forever and ever. Johnny Depp is another guy, luckiest guy in the world. You know, we know what happens after a while. Sex is not good anymore. Drinking is not good anymore. They go to the dope. That's no good anymore. They jump out the window. It, 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 do you agree with that old saying, Pat? Like, show me a hot girl and I'll show you a guy who's sick of having sex with her? Wait, wait. Get, get that again. No, like, if you show me a hot girl, I'll show you her boyfriend who's sick of having sex with her. I don't understand that right, at all. Don't worry. It's an old expression. It's all right. I know it's an old expression. You shouldn't say it. Well, no, it just means that like, like guys get bored. <laughs> I don't listen. It does he wake back to sex again? Who gives a damn? <laughs> John, John. I do. John. Well, well, well this is no love, romance, and other lies. I gotta go now because I gotta take a nap. <laughs> All right, Pat. I love you. Thank you for calling in. Yeah, Pat. Thank you so much. I, you know, I miss you, man. Let's hang out one of these times. God bless, buddy. All right. I'll see you later. <laughs>
You know, I just wish that he had some opinions. I, if it, he could only just narrow it down, don't you think? He's so amazing. It's so funny, though, uh, because I totally disagree. I think Artie is super funny. I think Dice, that show, couldn't be funnier. But I, what I do love is to hear every single opinion that You know what? I, you know, I got to be honest with you, Tammy. I love Artie. As you know, Artie is a good friend of mine. But... He had a person call into his show trashing me, so I had no problem with that. <laughs> it's like, hey, you're going to do that. You know, I don't know. I didn't know Pat was going to say that about Artie, and of course Artie's funny. I, I just I, – I really did not expect Pat to say that. I knew that he was going to – I knew he, a couple – I was trying to lead him into, like, the Frank Sinatra story. Yeah, no, and... I know. Well, well, first he said he worked one time, then it became and, 50. Yeah, he well, – He's a really good guy, though. And it's it's amazing the acuity of his memory because I don't remember half the stuff that I've done. You know, you get crazy and you're busy. Yeah, yeah. But I guess the least amount of people you speak to, it's easier to. But the funniest part, Tammy, for those, because this is not a TV show, is Tammy just, you know, what you buy, People magazine or something? Yeah, some kind of trash uh, magazine. Just like, so, so all, all, all Tammy had to do was turn a page and just name a celebrity and Pat had an opinion about it. Right, we had Muhammad Ali, yeah. we had the Kardashians, yeah, just, we had... It was just like, you know... Kelly Ripa. Yeah, Kelly, I, and he ripped on Ripa. Yeah, I... I knew it, though. Where the hell did that come from? <laughs> You're lucky. You know, the thing is, is I'll get a call from him. Uh, if either, you know, I'll call him to say thank you. But if he doesn't like it, he'll be mad at me. Like, if he thinks you treated him with disrespect, you know he'll be mad at me. So this was important to me. Oh, okay. Well, I, well I've known him for so long. I mean, I don't. I, no, no, I, I know you didn't. I'm just oh, saying yeah, yeah. that that's the risk that you take with the friendship. Oh, yeah, and, and like, you know, and he said something, because at the end, he said something about, didn't he say something about a guy being bored of a girl or something? That's why I brought up that expression. I know what you meant. You know what's funny about him is that he has always told the truth, and he still had a yeah. very respected career. I tell the truth every once in a while. On, I mean, I always tell the truth, but, like, publicly, and people are like, you're dangerous. You're dangerous. The truth has become dangerous in this industry. Now, I don't yeah. think you can always say what you – like, he went to war, like – before Twitter wars. Like, those were yeah. real feuds that oh, they no, used to I'm have not, back in the day. Believe me, when he was on the Stern Show, he would never held back. I mean, I told you with, with him and his son, I mean, he would be like, you know, your son, I love you. And someone's like, are, are you sure? And he goes, no, I'm not. I don't love you. Like, he just, just would say everything. And that's why he was a great guest. He would, he's totally unfiltered. I mean, you know, yeah. like, I mean, he makes me look like I actually have a filter, which I don't. <laughs> I don't, I don't mind. I'll say anything. I'll, I'll say anything pretty much. And, you know, if he is mad about the sex question, just tell him it's, it's the thing is called love, romance, and other lies. I don't think he'd be mad about it. I think he, he gave us a lot of time. I think that was pretty awesome. You yeah. know what I mean? I I mean, I, you know, Garrett, how much time have we been on? 50? He gave us 50 minutes. That's wow. a long time. That's a and, long and he conversation. the first time we called. He's a good guy. I you mean, know. he always I, – I had that TV show for a small amount of time. He came down and did an episode. Yeah. I was so disgusted because the first editor that we had – didn't even you know like you do a promo for the yeah. next show yeah. didn't even show pat cooper in the promo for the next show i'm like that's not just an old man sitting at the table that is the legend that pat legend. cooper yeah. like, you know you can't be part of this you know what I, I just gotta tell you like this is like this is the story of my weekend here and i and as you know you couldn't get a hold of me because i left yeah, yeah. My, because I left my um, I left my phone charger in the car, and then and then, and then such a bullshit excuse that if I was a girl that was dating you, I would think it was such bullshit. I, well, believe but me, I believe you. It's pissed off a lot of people on a number yeah. of occasions. But what happened was, I didn't tell you the whole story. What happened was okay. So after my gig at the roast, I bring home a girl that I wanted to have sex with. It's your mother's house. Yeah, but my mother's in Denmark. Okay, so I thought you were coming home to see your mother. No, I, I, I came home because I had a gig at the stress factory. I, I had the roast to do, and I wanted to go to my father's grave for his, what he would have been, you know, a, a 90. Okay, but he, she's not home. She wasn't here. She's not okay. home. So I bring the girl home, and she's like, like she's, this is how stupid I am. I, I don't want to, I don't want to mention any name, any, like, not like the girl's name, but she shows me her arm that's like bandaged, and she tried to kill herself. She tells me eight well, That's times. genius. That's an easy mark there, Tom. Yes. Wow. And, but not only that, she also... Uh, then drives like a maniac all over the place in her car. And you got into a car. You've never met this girl before. No. So anyway, then we get to my house, and you know, you know, and she rides a motorcycle, and, and then she decides that she's going. To, she wants to go 
on a swing wait, set. You, wait, stop, stop. What? She rode a motorcycle to your house? Did you ride on the back oh, no, of no, it? No, 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 no. She, she wanted me to get on the back of the motorcycle, but I chose the car. Okay. No, I didn't want to get in the back of the motorcycle. Okay. But that would have been a little too scary. Well, and beyond the fact that she obviously has tried to kill herself. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway. It, then she had sex with you and she really no, no, followed you, through. No, 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 no. So, what happened was then I said, no, then she goes, oh, come on, let's go to the swing set and let's see who could swing higher. She's a real, like, you know, a competitor. So, what happens? She's 12. <laughs> exactly. She's like 33. Story of my life. We start swinging on the swing set. She goes really high, bangs her foot onto the freaking sand, breaks her foot. Now I got to like car- practically carry her back to my house, nurse her. I get no sex, nothing. Th- this is the story. And that's after, you know, like I already can't move my arm because I hurt my freaking shoulder playing Ring Around the Rosie with my freaking grandniece. And my brother told me not to put the whammy on me. And then sure enough, I fall and, and hurt my shoulder. And here's the best part. While we're about to do the roast, my brother who's going to Belmont, says to me, John, I'm going to bet on the horses. Who do you want? I said, well, t- tell me a little bit. They got, they got this horse named Gettysburg. He's the rabbit. You know what that means? Yeah, yeah. He comes out of that gate really fast, but he you know, he dies down after a mile, but he gets right. all the horses to go. Right, 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 right. I said, who is the rabbit stable mate? Because it's the same owner. That, they probably send the rabbit out, go fast to get the freaking other horse that he's, he's stable mates, to, and he's going to want to kick his ass. Right. He goes, his name is Creator. I go, I'll tell you what. Put 10 bucks on Creator. Okay. He goes, all right. So I'm on, I'm on the way to the gig, and then I get a, a voice from my, from my brother. And, and, and my brother told me how stupid it is to bet on creative. He's, he's 17 to 1 on the dog. He said, all right, waste your money. It's, reta- you know, it's, you know. $10. Yeah, it's dumb anyway. I get a message on my phone. He goes, John, guess what? Creator won. I can't believe it. I got 160 bucks for you. Ten seconds later, literally, I have another voicemail. Uh, uh, don't listen to that first message. I can't find the ticket. The fucking guy makes the bet and loses the fucking ticket. That's hysterical. Story of my life. The story of my life. I mean, these things just happen. And I can, you know. No, it doesn't just happen. John, first of all, you made a choice. Like, here's the thing. Now that, you can't help. You can't help that your brother, but you should know your brother. It's not like he's new to you. He's you responsible, that... my brother. Very responsible. Yes, at the, at the track, he's responsible. No, he's okay. very responsible. It, you, when you bring a girl, like, listen, we all had those moments. Yeah. I'm not above it. We've all had those moments where yeah. it seems like it's easier yeah. for the end. Okay, yeah. I got it. I'm not, I'm not judging her. I am judging her a little bit that, that she, that's a, something that comes out right away. And she's literally got a bandage on her arm. Yeah. So this is not like, she's not even healed from her attempt. <laughs> yeah. like, but she, no, I didn't know that till we were like very close to my house. I didn't know any of this until we she got... She radioed in from the motorcycle? No, no. We took the car. You're not listening. Oh, she, I thought you said that she rode her motorcycle. Oh, no, she wanted me to ride home with her on the motorcycle. Like, oh, you know, she, had to, she was by our house. And I said, no, no, okay. no. Let's take the car. So, but even still. So, at that point, you still continued to go on, right? Oh, I, I, I didn't have another ride, so she drove me home. Plus, I wanted the banger. You are ridiculous. And guess what? I mean, I... And you didn't. Well, I made out a little bit. And that's all you got with the broken foot? <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's the new cause she, could, thing. she you, couldn't run away you just try to get her hurt it's truly the weak one falling off from the herd like she couldn't run away like, she couldn't run away you're like you're like you're like a uh, kathy bates in misery <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she couldn't run away oh my god uh, well this has been fun you know what she's probably dead now <laughs> I know. I, I. You should have seen the. If this doesn't stick her over the edge, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure you what. You should have was. seen the, the the psychological thing. I was sitting there talking about how everybody, you know, and how you sh- you shouldn't kill yourself. There's always the next day. I mean, you should have seen me. I was brilliant trying to talk it down, but I don't know. You're trying to get in her blouse. Of course. <laughs> You're trying to talk. Her walk of shame wasn't even a full walk. It was a hop. <laughs> She, in fact, she left before. Like I said, well, just like you can stay here, you know. And then, like, she's like, and after a half an hour, nah, I'm just gonna go. Looking at your your Def Leppard posters in your room <laughs> that your mother hasn't taken down. <laughs> but anyway, so that was fine. I, the, the, you know, the good thing, Tammy, is that where we thought we weren't gonna, because you know, we were scrambling to get guests. See for this one, Pat was awesome. Happy accidents. Oh, so good for you for, uh, you know, calling in that favor with Pat. And I hope he isn't mad. But, uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, he, he's just the greatest. 
There may come a time, and the day may never come, but when I ask a favor of you, <laughs> great like, who did he, he, let, Let's just see. He, he, like, uh, you know, how many people did he trash today? Let's see. Uh, I don't know, but there's so many people. Listen, it's not like I'm already on the top of everybody's <laughs> list to call. No, hold on. Andrew Dice Clay. Who my, my two friends... Artie, who stuck up for me, uh, Andrew, who's always Artie been Lang, solid. Andrew Dice Clay, Howard Stern. Stern. Um, who else? Who else? Uh, I know there was more. Uh, his family. Um, yeah, but uh, you know we we love him either way. No, I love it. It's, it's just so funny. He, he just goes off and off and off. He doesn't I loved it. That's Ellie Ripper. Yeah, well, <laughs> President Obama. I'm already being audited everywhere. You can't say anything against Chuck Schumer, so. No. Anyway, well, this has been fun, and uh, uh, we will uh, we will be back. And this one, uh, I hope everyone has downloaded the Howie Mandel one. Howie Mandel, Guy and Fieri. And with, 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 with Guy Fieri. And this one, I think, is equally as great. Thanks to Pat Cooper. Thanks to Tommy Pescatelli. And this is Stuttering John and uh, the Stuttering John podcast, Love, Romance, and Other Lies. With Tammy Pascatelli, get it on iTunes or at Podcast.